CataractCoach.com. Violent shaking every 15 seconds. You will not believe this must-see video. It's not an easy case. Now, the cataract's not too bad, but the patient was referred to us by another ophthalmologist because the patient has very severe Parkinson's disease. This patient's unable to hold still, and because of other medical issues, the patient is not able to have general anesthesia. So this patient now is being treated by me. We're going to do the cataract surgery. The anesthesiologist here is giving her sedation, and that's intravenous midazolam, which is a benzodiazepine. She's also getting some intravenous fentanyl. And on top of that, she's also getting intravenous propofol. So many agents in an attempt to quell or quiet down this severe tremor. But as you can tell, it's just not working. So what can we do to finish this case? And I wanted to show you the whole case start to finish in real time so you can see how we do it. We're just going to do each step between the shakes. And let me show you what I mean there. So I'll wait for the tremor to be, go through. There it is. Now I have a brief window of time. So we'll quickly fill the eye with our viscoelastic and let's come out of the eye. Now that's a relatively low risk maneuver. But now the next part of making the phaco incision is higher risk. We really have to be careful because this diamond keratome can cut you know, inadvertently a much larger incision. So let's wait till we get between two tremors. And then once they would do that, we'll hold out the fixation ring and quickly make a nice clean incision and then come away, step away from the eye, beautiful, and just in time. So of course, this is a very stressful case. And I wouldn't recommend this case to most surgeons, but certainly if you're an experienced surgeon with at least 10 years of cataract surgery under your belt, you can handle this case. You just have to be cautious. Now I'm resting my hands on the patient's uh, cheek, as you can tell, we're operating temporally and I'll start and do part of the procedure, and then I'll sense that she'll move, so then I'll quickly pull out of the eye, like that. And we'll continue, and we're gonna get our rexes done. Now, we also are putting in a torque lens, because the patient has a high degree of astigmatism. So finishing this up here. Now you may want to ask, well, why do you need to do the surgery so badly in this patient? Well, she's monocular. She had a retinal vascular occlusion in the other eye, which has rendered her essentially monocular. And we want to be able to fix the cataract in this eye to restore her good vision. She's a hyperope with a lot of astigmatism. So here's her hydrodissection. Now keep watching. We're going to do more hydrodissection. I want to be very cautious here with her capsular bag. So if we can, let's get that nucleus partially prolapsed out of the capsular bag. There you go. His little iris prolapse too, which we'll fix. There's the whole nucleus. Now let's recoat the endothelium with viscoelastic just for extra protection. Now with two instruments going in the eye, we'll put the phacoprobe in and the chopper. With the two instruments, hopefully we'll have a little bit better fixation of the eye. But certainly that's not going to prevent these grand movements of the head and the body. And this patient really is trying her best. Then we chop the nucleus in half. We're going to emulsify it. I'm going to stay here and do it pretty quickly. If there's a lot of movement, there it is. We'll just try to stay with the program here. We're fixating the eye nicely, just feeding the cataract into the phaco probe, and we'll emulsify it relatively quickly. Notice the chopper in the safe position just to make sure we don't want to have the posterior capsule come into contact with that phaco tip. Let's try to get that epinuclear shell if we can before there's a big grand movement and there's the shell flipping it up. Let's get out of this eye. There's the last couple of pieces. We'll finish that with irrigation aspiration. So here we go again, big, big movements, big shaking by the patient. Now, the patient is trying her best. Now, obviously she's very sedated here. One very important thing, just give encouragement. If the patient is still alert enough to understand your voice, do not yell at the patient. Do not scold the patient. This is the patient's best effort. Tell the patient you're doing a great job. It looks good. You're so good. Everything looks fine. And that encouragement will help you a lot more than any type of yelling or scolding. So we've cleaned up the capsule bag. Let's fill it with our viscoelastic. Now, of course, the hard part here is not inserting the lens. That's easy. It's getting that torque lens to the correct axis. And so we're going to do that. Let me show you. So again, big, big movements here. My technician has already loaded up our lens. The purple ink marks or black ink marks on the limbus are the cardinal meridians. And we've already marked the cornea 
at the steep axis. And we've also made this phaco incision on that steep axis. So there's the toric lens. We'll let that unfold in the eye. We'll try to find a little window of uh, less movement of the head and get that lens unfolded. And because it's a toric lens, of course, we need to remove the viscoelastic from underneath the optic. We want to make sure the optic's going to stick into position. And so let's go behind the lens, take out viscoelastic. This is high risk, so be careful. We've got to come out of the eye if she shakes too much. And we'll clean up the viscoelastic, clean up any little small fragments of lens material in the AC. That looks pretty good. Lens is in pretty reasonable position. We just need to fine-tune it on the dialing of the axis. So a little bit more movement there. There you go. There we go. And now using that chopper, and this has to be very cautious. Let's tilt the lens and rotate it a little bit more, being very careful because that chopper is in close proximity to that capsule. Oh, okay, all right, a lot of movement there. Let's just bring the chopper out, keeping the infusion in. Now we have another brief window of time. You just watching the video for me is stressful. And this was a super stressful case. I'm honored that a colleague would send this patient to me and had enough faith in, in me. But this really did cause me a tremendous amount of stress for the day. And that's why I really wanted to show you the video. At the end, there's the toric lens beautifully lined up. You can see the toric marks we've made on the cornea. And those are aligned nicely with the toric marks on the IOL optic. So let's seal up the incisions here. And you have a nice overlap too. We'll do a little sweep, angle sweep there. We can also use this cannula if we need you to, to dial the lens just a pinch more to get it just perfect. And that looks pretty darn good. And now sealing it up. And you know what? We're also going to, it's, we're also going to put in some uh, medicine inside the eye. We'll put some moxifloxacin and we'll put a little bit of triamcin loan. And you can see even here at the end of the case, this is such a challenge for us, such a challenge. And this is why, with my technician trying to hold the patient's head as well. So sealing up the para, lens is still in good position. We're really happy with that. Here comes some triamcinolone, just about a half milligram. That'll help quell the inflammation. The patient, as you can imagine, also has a hard time putting drops in her eye. So everything went great. I'm happy to tell you in the post-op period, she achieved pretty close to a plano outcome and was absolutely thrilled. And of course, we told her, she was a beautiful patient, and she tried her best, and we appreciate that. So thanks for watching, and I hope that you don't have to struggle through a case like this in the future.